Greetings, unsettled souls! Sam I need to Angie doing political commentary for the media speaks. Chris Nell destroying the studio on the way out like Godzilla going through Tokyo. What an appropriate analogy for today. Uh, Alright, friends, gallows humor, if you will. It's uh, Sam I beat Angie bringing you political commentary for the media speaks, and uh, it's massive Fukushima update day. You know what that means? It comes once a month. It's when we cover all things radio, uh, radiologically uh, connected. It's when we cover uh, Fukushima. We cover what's happening in the whole world. Uh, this time we got some uh, information on how it's affecting America, uh, another nuclear power plant. We got a uh, live stream here. We've got the uh, higher definition up there. And you have me reminding you that this is listener supported. Look down there, look at Patreon, please donate. You can also give through PayPal at the correct views at hotmail.com. All right, friends, before I get into the actual articles we have, I wouldn't be much of a host if I didn't address the presidential election. Now, I know that a lot of people did not like Trump, and that's fine. We're not going to try to convince you of whether or not they like Trump. I have many other videos that talk about that, and I tend to keep my politics away from Fukushima. Having said that, I do not believe in the lie of global warming, and we're going to address uh, where Donald Trump might stand on such an administration. Um, he's been very tight-lipped about nuclear issues, and that has worried me greatly, and it's worried a lot of people that, you know, on both sides of the aisle, um, where Trump stands on this. Thankfully, he doesn't want to spend a lot of taxpayers' money. That means that if he would get a, get rid of the tax incentives and the, um, the amount of money that the government gives to nuclear power plants, then there is a really good chance that we would see at least a slowing down of the future of nuclear technology in this country. I say that because nuclear power plants cannot exist without getting money from the government because they are so expensive when they melt down that everyone knows that they are uninsurable. Therefore, the government pays for nuclear technology, at least in America, to exist and throughout most of the world. So in that aspect, we could look at Trump as a... definitely better than Hillary Clinton would have been. Hillary Clinton's um, answer to everything was to go green, go green, go green. And even people who are politically opposed to me, like Helen Caldicott, Dr. Caldicott, she says the answer to global warming certainly is not nuclear technology. And that's where the more liberal, I'm actually not much of a Republican, I'm more of a libertarian. But the libertarian candidate this time, Gary Johnson, believed in global warming. That would have led to more nuclear power plants, although he also is against subsidies, so it's hard to say. Um... I don't know. I do know that Trump does not buy into the global warming lie. And a lot of the people that do buy into global warming tend to want to fix the problem with nuclear power plant technology. And if you're watching this show and you are a green supporter and you do believe in global warming, this is where you and I, like I said, tend to agree that nuclear technology here is not the answer. So that, that's my analogy on the election of Trump. Um, Again, it's a commentary show, it's about nuclear uh, discussions, and it's about nuclear facts. That was my discussion, and here are my facts, friends. They're going into it now. Behind me, we've got Fact Cam, as a matter of fact, and uh, live, we've got the... You can see the Fact Cam. There we go. Perfect. And now I've got to get my screen to come up, because it never wants to when I want it to. There we go. I swear the powers that be are against the massive Fukushima update, but we shall prevail. Newstarget.com. I think this is the first time News Target's ever been on the show, so I could rock them aboard. Fukushima has destroyed the Pacific coast and will take 16 million years for the t contamination to dissipate. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster is one of the biggest environment environmental terrors of our generation. 
an entire region of Japan was turned into a complete disaster area because of the negligence of one corporation, that would be TEPCO, that would be GE. So if you've got money in GE, if you're part of a mutual fund that they are in, get out of there. They do not bring great things to life, they bring Fukushima. They were warned about Fukushima long before it happened by the same people that are trying to warn Iran now. Um, absolute disaster, friends. That's who did this. And it says, as horrifying as the initial disaster was, the long-term effects are what should be focused on. Well, listen to this. The Fuku disaster has left the entire Pacific Ocean completely contaminated. And experts believe that it will take roughly 16 million years for the contamination to dissipate totally. Millions and millions of years are needed in order to relieve this disaster, which is frightening to say the least. Now, if you're new to the nuclear discussion, I do wish to pause ever so briefly here and explain to you why this matters. These radionuclides are in the ocean. And there, there are, there's a crowd of people that says dilution is the answer to pollution. What that means is if you take a little bit of radiation and you spread it over the entire ocean, that radiation is not going to hurt anything because of the amount of pure scope and size of the Pacific Ocean. The reason that this doesn't work is because radionuclides are a little bit different than conventional, like, you know, a little bit of oil over a mass section. It's not a good idea to put oil in the water, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, in that instance, if it was just a little bit, not like Exxon, but if it was a little bit, not the BP disaster, a little bit, you wouldn't have as much of a problem as you would with less contamination with radionuclides, and I'll tell you why. The small fish inevitably get eaten by the big fish. It's called the food chain. I don't think I'm teaching anyone anything here. Stay with me. Um, that continues to go up the food chain. It gets into the seaweed, it gets into the plankton, it gets into the smaller life that gets eaten by the larger. And with radionuclides, the trouble is it doesn't just die with the fish. It goes into the fish that eats it, and the fish that eats it, on and on and on to infinity. It doesn't stop. That is why you cannot find any bluefin tuna coming out of the Pacific Ocean that are not showing signs of Fukushima poisoning. That would be zero. None. None at all. Zero, as in none. And look at it this way. If you put... Um, Oh, what would be a good example? If you put a little bit of... It take, take a two liter of pop. Here's a good example. Take a two liter of pop. The soda, for those of you uh, elsewhere. Take a two liter of pop and go ahead and put in it a drop of gasoline. Just a drop. That's not going to do anything. You're probably not even going to taste it. And for most people, it's probably not going to even be noticed by the body. Am I suggesting it? No, but you know what I'm saying. Now, take that same eyedropper and put one drop of liquid LSD into the two liter of pop. And you are going to be tripping ball skis in no time at all, I promise. That acid would be comparable to what one little drop of radioactivity does to the Pacific Ocean. You know, it's, only, it's only a nuclear power plant. Look how big the Pacific Ocean is. Look how big the two liter of pop is and think about what the LSD would do. That is the way that you need to look at this. And Fukushima would be you four or five drops of LSD in your uh, one liter, most likely. This is really bad. Uh, thankfully, the government has taken action against the organization. Chris Summers of Daily Mail writes earlier this year, and again, this is who was responsible for this, Three executives with TEPCO, that's the Tokyo Electric Power Company, that is the Japanese arm of General Electric, were charged with professional negligence resulting in death and injury. Uh, Summers also writes the tsunami 
more, killed more than 18,000 people, and Fukushima was the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. It's actually worse than that. Although nobody is believed to have died directly as a result of Fukushima, that's not true. Uh, that's not true at all. We are seeing cancer rates spiking through the roof. And it's the kind of cancers that are associated with radi radiation poisoning, such as um, thyroid cancer. A record number of Japanese children have thyroid cancer within the last three years. Look it up. It says, unfortunately, being charged with negligence does not solve the actual environmental problems that have been caused. And there are a number of issues that come with these kinds of nuclear disasters, and the public needs to be aware of them. Yeah, we can tell you what they are. It's increased cancers. It's increased heart disease. It's increased, a uh, decreased quality of life, I should say. And it said the problems caused by Fukushima affect us all in the end, and we need to be prepared to combat them. There are some things you can do to help. We've covered some of them here, but here's a list. It's one of the reasons you tune in. Welcome aboard. Making sure that our iodine levels are in check is important, as are ensuring that we have plenty of supplies of storable food, especially organic storable food is necessary in order to guarantee that we will be safe and sound in the midst of chaos. That's, of course, if one of the reactor buildings were to tumble. It said whether that's, and it is more of a, a prepping, and I'm not against prepping, it goes into more of a prepping direction. A bentonite clay is something you can do. Hitting 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day is something you can do. Taking selenium is something that you can do. Keeping your calcium levels high, men be careful because of kidney stones, Keeping your calcium levels high so that strontium-90, deadly bone cancer, deadly killer strontium, does not get into the body. Uh, because your body will expel it to some degree if your calcium levels are full. Because the body cannot tell calcium from strontium. And it will uptake one or the other. And uh, you know which one you want that to be. Dailymail.co.uk. <coughs> Fukushima frozen in time. How the uninhabitable exclusion zone remains untouched five years after the tsunami caused Japanese nuclear plant disaster. Yeah, I mean, this, you want to see what you want to see exactly what it is that comes from nuclear technology. Okay, look behind me at FactCam. Those of you on the uh, stream, this is it right here. This is what's left behind. This is the great things that were brought to you in life. Thank you, Tepco. Thank you, GE. Thank you, all the people that thought that the answer to global warming was to put these nuclear power plants up so that tidal waves can come and shut down the electrical supply that cools them. And then nuclear reactions can happen that spread cancer and disease all over the country. Look at this. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, TEPCO, for the great and wonderful things you brought to life. It's enough to make you sick. Friends, all of this is brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. If you have not been to Sticker Junkie, then whatever you do, make sure as quickly as possible you check them out. When you go through, let them know what the design is. If for any reason you don't even know yourself, then just give them the ideas that are in your head. Watch them work. I know D -Lake, D David Lake. I know him personally. He is the Sticker King. So do me a favor. Go to Sticker Junkie and on checkout, type in the correct views or the correct views. And you're going to save even more money just because you're a listener. Friends, this is counterpunch.org. Fukushima cover-up, Robert Hunziker. And this is from uh, October the 31st, so this is interesting. It's Halloween, how appropriately. Uh, it is literally impossible for the world community to get a clear understanding of and truth about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. This statement is based upon the feature article in Columbia Journalism Review. It's from October the 25th, my brother's birthday. birthday entitled Sinking Bold Foray into Watchdog Journalism in Japan. The scandalous subject matter of the article is frightening to its core. It says essentially, it paints a picture of upending and abolishing a three-year attempt by one of Japan's oldest and most liberal intellectual newspapers, the Ashahi Shimbun, and its effect of watchdog journalism of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. In the end, the newspaper's special watchdog division suffered an unpre-announced abrupt closure. The CJR article, <coughs> whether intentionally or not, is an indictment of right-wing political control of media throughout the world. Pause. This is where I become a little bit angry. The right-wing media that controls everything, 
First of all, the entire media is mostly left. You see this in Europe, and you see this especially in America. You see this in the way that Trump was called a racist, and a fascist, and a bigot, and a homophobe, and a sexist, and everything but the Antichrist himself, and in some instances, even that. Um, he was called Hitler. Meanwhile, the left doesn't get blamed for the Fukushima disaster. It was the left that said that it was a good idea to build these. Okay, not in the 70s. I mean, the left, and I used to be more left-minded. Back in the days when the China Syndrome was being done, I'm no big Jane Fonda fan, but back in the days when she was anti-nuke and she was making movies like that, yeah, okay, I could hear the left. But since then, they have embraced this global warming ideology and have been in favor of promoting these nuclear power plants forever. The left is also the one, Obama was our leader at the time that the gravity of the nuclear disaster was not told to the American people or the world because of worrying about the effect of the bottom line on imports and General Electric. It was the Obama left administration that has gone ahead and hidden and covered up much of this. If Obama or Clinton at the time, the leaders were worthy of even a hint of what their job title was, then they would have went ahead and warned the American people the absolute moment these plants started to melt down. They would have talked about it while the tidal wave was on the way. That, that, that is bad reporting here from Counterpunch. But anyway, it says the story is moreover extraordinarily scary and deepest concern because no sources can be found for the accurate, truthful reporting of an incident as powerful and as dangerous as the meltdown the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima. Yeah, we know this. Look at beautiful girl Dana, and what he, uh, that's the name of the site. Look what they've done. I should say he has done, but it's, again, beautiful girl Dana is the site. Look up the work that he's done showing the damage in the Pacific Ocean. It says here that the molten cores of these reactors melted down to a stage called Coria which is a lumpy hunk of irradiating radionuclides so deadly that robotic cameras are fried. They're zapped. We've covered that on the air here before. The radioactivity is powerful, deadly, and possessed of frightening longevity hundreds of years, no, 16 million years. Again, for those who miss class, TEPCO has no idea where the masses of sizzling hot radioactive goo are today. Did they burrow into the ground? Nobody knows, but it is known that these blobs of radioactivity are extraordinarily dangerous, as in deathly, erratically spewing radioactivity, who knows where. Now, people who are new to this are going to be inclined to say, all right, well, Sam, if it's buried itself in the ground, it's probably okay. Uh, if it was in, like, a sarcophagus of some kind, perhaps, but that's not what we're talking about here. First of all, Japan, for those of you that don't know this, they are... Um, on a, an island. And it, it's true, Japan is an island. It's a series of islands, actually. And um, the water table is very, very close to the ground. So, like, here's your water, and up here is the ground. Now, if this sinks in a little bit, how far does it sink before it gets into the water? Once it gets into the water, then it gets into the drinking supply. And now you've got a big problem. So if this has, in fact, buried itself into the ground, which is what the China Syndrome was about, then uh, we're in for it. This is, this is strikingly bad news, and it's something that we've been worried about since the beginning of this. Fukushima is a national worldwide emergency that is the worst kept secret ever because everybody knows it's happening. It is current. It is alive. It is deadly. And it has killed it. And it killed many more as the main countless people over many decades. And again, this is because the cancer rates are going to grow. And the, uh, the Abe administration, they're trying to get people to have the Olympics there. But listen to this. There's some facts here. The Fukushima cleanup will take decades to complete, if ever completed. And nobody knows the whereabouts of the world's most deadly radioactive blobs of sizzling hot masses of death and destruction, begging the question, why is there a Chernobyl exclusion zone of 1,000 square miles after one nuclear meltdown 30 years ago, yet Fukushima, with three meltdowns, each more severe than Chernobyl, is being repopulated? It doesn't compute. 
The short answer is the Abe administration claims the radioactivity is being cleaned up. A much longer answer excused the Abe administration of explaining the near impossibility of cleaning up radioactivity out there at the countryside. There are, after all, independent organizations with bots on the ground in Fukushima. To tell the truth, having measured dangerous levels of radiation throughout the region where the cleanup crews work. This is something that is done again for the good of the bottom line. Japan's journalists belong to press clubs, which are exclusively restricted to the big boys and girls from major media outlets, where stories are hand-fed, it says, according to government official them. Period. It is the news. Period. No questions asked. And this is how Ah Shahi got into trouble. They set up a, th a unit of 30 journalists to tell the truth about Fukushima, and along the way won awards for journalism until it suddenly stopped. A big mystery ensues. So, I mean, we, we may never find out exactly what, what, what it is that could come here. It says, considering the awards they've won during its short foray into investigative journalism, like Japan's equivalent to the Pulitzer in 2012 for reporting about the gag order on scientists in the Fukushima disaster, the government wouldn't let the scientists tell the truth. It says the government has put an end to investigative journalism. Um, now again, it looks like it might be very right-minded over there. I can see what they're taking about. But um, listen to this. 30 years after the fact, uh, Chernobyl. Horribly deformed Chernobyl children are found in over 30 asylums in the Belarus backwoods deep in the countryside. Equally as bad, but maybe more odious, as of today, Chernobyl radiation since 1986 is already affecting a second generation of kids. If you don't know what radiation does, go ahead and type in Belarus birth defects. I dare you. According to USA Today, Chernobyl Legacy, kids with bodies ravaged by the disaster, April 17th of 2016, there are 2,000,000 397, 863 people registered with Ukraine's health ministry to receive ongoing Chernobyl-related health care. Of these, 453,391 are children. None of them were born at the time of the accident. Their parents were children in 1986. These children have a range of illnesses. Let's see what GE brings to good things to life. Let's see. Respiratory, digestive, multi-skeletal, eye diseases, blood diseases, cancer, congenital malformations, genetic abnormalities, and trauma. So why don't we go ahead and have the Olympics right there in arguably the most dangerous, contrived, deadly place other than Belarus in the world. Guys, I've got two stories to get to. This one's brought to you by Change Transportation. Don't call Uber. Call Change Transportation. When you do, say, hey, I heard about you guys, some of the correct views, and uh, Kenny's going to give you an amazing price. That is Change Transportation. Find them on Facebook. MiamiHerald.com FPL Nuclear Plant Leak Imperils Biscayne Bay. Not only... Have we not learned anything whatsoever from Fukushima? But we have now entered into the realm of blatantly taking advantage of the fact that the average American, and at this point the average person the world over quickly, is uneducated, apathetical, and willing to accept just about anything. Um, Going back to how I opened the show, many of us who voted for Trump voted because we're sick of having a stupid nation. Um, and don't think I'm calling the younger generation stupid. I'm 43, and uh, there, was, there wasn't a whole lot of smart people when I was in school. A lot of this started to die in the 60s. If you want to, you can trace it all the way back to the Second World War and the First World War when we took fathers out of homes and mothers had to go to work to keep the country going and there was nobody to raise the kids things quickly started to go backwards starting there if you must know um, I'm going to do a whole piece on that someday Miami Herald editorial board the discovery of dirty water contaminated by tritium which is deadly leaking into Biscayne Bay from the cooling canals at the Turkey Point nuclear power plant is the clearest sign yet 
the FPL and state regulators are doing a poor job of protecting the public. Surprise, surprise. At this point, there is no reason to panic. No, there's never a reason to panic. Do you ever notice this? The discovery confirmed by a study represents a sharp indictment of the safety regulation system and deserves the full attention of the utility and government officials at every level. Now, the canary in the coal mine is dying, an alarming sign that something is very wrong and that much worse may be ahead unless corrective action is taken immediately. Tritium, for those of you that don't know, is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen that emits a relatively weak form of radiation found naturally on, the, naturally on the planet, used as tracer element to monitor leaks or spills from nuclear plants. It is not considered hazardous at low levels. Now again, let, let, let's talk about this low level thing. We've addressed this at other shows. The word of the day is low level. Type in uh, two words of the day, I guess, today. Type in low level in the comment line and you'll get something free. Um, that's how I know you're still listening. Low level, words of the day. That's, here's the thing about low level. If you take and you say, I'm freezing, and let's just pretend this studio that I'm in is absolutely freezing. Okay. So what you do is you light a match to warm the room. Well, that's not going to work. Okay. It's a low level file, fire. It's low level heat. It's not going to warm us. Now take that match while it's burning and poke it in your eye. Now that low level damage is quite extensive. Tritium, if it gets in your body, will eat the cellular structure of your body like a hot match stuck into your eye. Are we clear? So enough of this low level crap already. During the testing period, however, tritium at the bottom of the bay, close to the canals, ranged from more than 130 times to 215 times higher than normal in ocean water. That is far below dangerous levels, oh, of course, but no one has gauged how much damage has been done to the cooling canal system. It's certainly bad enough to warrant public concern. Yeah, and since it tends to die quickly, it's not one of the ones that takes 16 million years. It's oftentimes a harpinger or a whistleblowing for a bigger problem, a, a, a leak of a different kind. South Florida residents have every right to demand the utility company, the state, and the local and regional water managers make it their urgent priority to fix the problem. If this doesn't light a fire under FPL and regulators, we wonder what will. They must, one, stop the leaks, two, determine how much damage the cooling canal system is causing to the Biscayne Bay Aquifer. In other words, it could very well likely be going into the water supply in Florida. Isn't that charming? The problems at Turkey Point have a troubling history. In 2013, during the expansion, FPL had to seek permission from nuclear regulators to operate the canals at 104 degrees, the hottest in the nation. When that produced signs of damage to the ecosystem, the new management plan was drawn up, but it didn't work either. Last month, Administrative Law Judge Bram Cantor ordered FPL and regulators to clean up the canals after finding they had caused massive underground salt water plume, threatening to contaminate drinking water well fills. FPL estimates that it dumps 600,000 pounds of salt daily into the Biscayne Aquifer. How in the world? People are saying that Donald Trump is not going to be able to get a land permit or a, uh, an environmental damage report that is going to allow him to build the wall with Mexico. But you can get an environmental impact report that allows you to do all of that, put salt and nuclear poison into the water. Oh, well, that's fine. Some bricks for a wall? That might hurt some great tortoise somewhere. Never mind the fact that this is poisoning everyone. We can, we can get an environmental impact statement for that. It'll be fine. Friends, that brings us to the dumb D of the day. That's right. It gets even dumber. This dumb D of the day is dumb indeed. Once again, brought to you by a chain transportation and sticker chunking. You are an idiot. You are an idiot. What am I talking about here? Uh, wait till you see this, my friends. Forbes, dumb of the day. 
Fukushima apples are dynamite in cocktails. Listen to this. The 42nd World Cocktail Championships have kicked off in Tokyo this week. It's an, annual, it's an unusual event to discuss a nuclear disaster. But what is exactly that Yushikazu Suda, the bartender of Tokyo's Ginza district who hails from Fukushima, is doing? Bartenders and mixologists from all over 53 countries were gathered in Tokyo. What a great place to poison yourself. To take part in a drink creating championships, but the International Bartenders Association is no ordinary group. They're using Fukushima apples. Fukushima apples to do this. It said it is made to dispel myths. No, there are no myths here. They're poisonous. Seven varieties of fruit will be used, but only Fukushima grown apples will be used in the fruit cutting event. Now, why is it they give them no other choice? Because they want them to eat this. And they want them to say, look, it didn't do any damage to you. You're fine. Trust the food here. Trust it. It's good. It's fine. Friends, if it takes 16 million years for the radionuclides to dissipate in the ocean, what do you think is happening when the trees that grow these apples uptake the radioactive fallout from Fukushima into the growing system inside the tree, inside the body of the tree. Can you imagine what that does? Look up plutonium. Look up uranium. This is insanity. This is them poisoning you for the good of the bottom line. Look up how Obama didn't test our food. We know it's poison over there. And that's the dumb deal of the day. I don't believe how stupid the world is around me. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Fukushima update was a little bit late this month. It's uh, going live on the morning of the 11th. And likewise, uh, the Dunn's Capital Month will be Monday, halfway through the month. Why? Because with the election, nobody was going to watch it. Nobody was going to pay any attention. So I put it off so that everybody would watch it and share it once the election was over. Um, I, have a, I have a party today, so if you're watching this on the 11th, leave a message in my comment line and I'll make sure you get an invite. Invite. I sound like beautiful girl Dana, an invite. Hello, Dana. I do want to talk to him. He's quite a man. Uh, lastly, friends, remember you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. PayPal. Put it into PayPal, friends. It helps me. helps me do a better show, and that's very important because that's what I want to bring all of you. So please do. Good night, friends. God bless. Oh, Christelle, my behind-the-scenes queen.